so. And you're just going to ask me questions? Yeah. No, you're just, you're just going to get out now. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Yeah. So, first thing is, please introduce yourself and let me know where you're from. I am from the Mercedes Ladies, one of the co-founders of the Mercedes Ladies, which is one of the first all-female DJ rap group from the Bronx, and I am Sherry Cher, also the first publisher that wrote the, well, for, wrote the first book uh, that's published this novel based on hip-hop and the first females of hip-hop. Yeah. So we're going to get into like all those things. Try it one more time by just saying, my name is Sherry Cher and I'm from the Bronx. Okay. Right? Whenever you're ready. Ready? I'm Sherry Cher, and I'm from the Bronx, the Boogie Down. Nice, nice. And you can keep that low so we can see your face, too. Okay. Um, so let's talk about growing up. Like, you, what do you remember about just growing up in the Bronx? What kind of girl were you? Um, what was the environment like? Well, growing up in the Bronx, I grew up on Daly Avenue, uh, Vice Avenue, Garden Street. Um, I came, my mom is a single home parent, and we had um, 11 siblings, uh, and so growing up in the Bronx at that time was, um, I wouldn't say hectic, but it wasn't like what you would picture as a normal childhood. Um, my mom was doing the best she can, raising 11 kids, and at that time it was the era of uh, drugs, uh, um, gangs, um, number runners, everything you could think of, but it was also the time when hip hop was being born, which I used to go out to see Grandmaster Flash and Theodore and all of them on the corners playing. So um, hip hop was really, to me, was an escape from what I was dealing with at home because it was very intense. A young girl, you know, my age at that time, growing up. Before, um, before there were hip hop activities, were there certain things that you would do as a kid? Like, were there any sports that you would play or games that you played, or was it was it the hip hop stuff that was early on for you? No, early on, <laughs> in my mind, I used to, um, as a young girl, I used to think I was going to be an actress. So I used to go, I used to be in the mirror, mirror mimicking what I seen on TV and, and um, thinking I was going to be an actress in my mind. That's the, I just liked it to be in front of the mirror. So at that time, that's what I seen because at, at that time and era, it really wasn't, uh, I didn't have no mentors like, you know, for a young black female growing up. Um, the women I seen coming up was usually raising their family on their own, uh, stressful situation, you know, trying to make ends meet. And it was always, um, and then when you looked on TV, it was, you know, stuff like good times and all that, but it was the black women, um, as I was growing up, was always trying to take care of a household and stressed out. So I used to just go in the mirror, and my mom had so many kids, I used to be going in the mirror thinking I was an actress. For some reason, I, I just was looking like I was an actress. So, yeah. When you think about those times, do you think of any, uh, are there any like really good memories that come back as far as like all your siblings together and stuff you did together or like that? You know, well, you know what, honestly, the times I remember growing up is one of my special times was Christmas. And my mom, we would have to pick out one toy that we wanted. And um, my mom had like two sets. It was my older brothers and sisters, and it was me and my younger sisters. We were the younger ones. And we used to have to pick out one toy, but it was a, the thing I used to love is that my mom used to, uh, Christmas Eve, used to cook. So she would be preparing dinner, and then we used to be in their kitchen helping her, and then we used to be licking the cake cake creaming from the bowl and then we used to have on the Michael Jackson Christmas song and 
And then my mom used to tell us we had to go to bed. Us, the Sandman was going to put sand in our eyes. So we used to be scared and hurry up and run into bed. And then we used to run into bed. We used to put the pillows over our head. And then we couldn't wait to get up in the morning to open up that one gift. And it really wasn't about the gift that was given. It was just the, it seemed like it was most the happy time with nothing. It just was like, it was the spirit of it. And I, and I always, as a little girl, always think of that because I, I, to me, that was one of the most happiest moments and I looked it forward every, towards every year. Great. And every year I got a Barbie doll. So, you know, I used to look, I used to like to try to just put lipstick on like the Barbie doll and all that. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was my favorite time growing up. Very cool. Absolutely. Um, so now, when you're talking about, um, you were still very young when you saw kind of like the park camps and stuff. What do you think was the first thing you saw as far as like, you know, hip hop? As far as did you see break dancers or did you see, you know, um, graffiti on the subway or was it a park gym that you kind of like got introduced to everything? Well, um, in school, we used to have um, one of the first things I when I first came into hip hop in school. Um, they used to have the boom box and the guys would be on the bus with the boom box and it was a tape from a park or a park jam or a corner jam and it, it, I was just so fascinated by it, like like listening to it and then um, that's when I met um, R.D. Smiley and um, she lived on Webster Avenue on Boston Road and uh, Tracy T. So I started hanging out with them and they used to go to Boston Road and it used to be uh, the Boston Road Crew, it used to be uh, Grandmaster Flash, you know, and they used to have jams on the corner. And I used to just like um, leave my house away from the house, and my mom was very strict. But the thing was, is I knew I would go way off the block so she couldn't call me out the window, or she had too many kids to come try to chase me. So I took the consequences when I came home, but I would not stop. And so I, I used to be fascinated. So I used to go through with Tracy T. and R.D. Smell and we used to just look and we was like, wow, that's crazy. It was just like, and then you felt like when you was up there, everybody was happy. It was like people was um, rapping about what was going on, you know, on their block or what was going on in their life, but it was the variety of sounds. Nobody sounded alike. Everybody had their own acting. You knew Grandmaster Flash from who they were. You knew this. It, and it was just like, it just took you away from like you didn't know where it was going, if I was going, but you just know when you're there that um, the vibe just took me away. When I wasn't even thinking about half of the stuff that was going on at home, I was like, wow, I just wanted to be there. So, yeah, it was like, 